With 160 miles of motorway to patrol, eight major towns, and a population of over a million, Cheshire police cars clock up an astonishing 12 million miles a year. So it's no wonder they get into a few scrapes. And keeping this fleet of cars, riot vans, boats and bikes on the road. That's as close as you get into a siren on a bicycle. Is the job of the vehicle maintenance unit. If Cheshire police need to get a beat car back on the road, they'll repair it. It's like the emergency services version of the Formula One pit stop does. If they need a new riot van, they'll design it. And if they want something that doesn't exist yet, they'll invent it. The worst thing about a dog vehicle is the smell. <coughs> Completely new design on the drainage system. If Cheshire Police were James Bond, these guys are Q. Would you want to be sat that close with an ordinary window? Welcome to Cop Car Workshop. There's a little-known treasure in Cheshire. Good morning, Fleet Services. Tracy speaking. Boying up, fixing and customising Cheshire's police fleet in order to help fight crime. Top everything up. Yeah, within about an hour, probably less, we'll be back on the road. Ran by Captain John Hoosey and his crew. So our team here, they're very much the unsung heroes. <laughs> they ensure that the police can go out and carry out their job. Tyres are the bane of our life in here. Constantly changing tyres. I do help out, but I can't imagine me, like, on the tools or on the spanners. I think that's the terminology. Something like that. Most of the vehicles that come through HMS VMU have two or four wheels, but once in a while, an unusual bounty washes ashore. Deep in the hull, uh, I mean offices, John is meeting a real sea captain. I love Corky, me and him are best mates, like. Known as Corky, he and John go back a long way. Come in, Dave. Long time no see, by the way. Come on, Michelle. <laughs> Head of the Northwest Underwater Search and Marine Unit, he's here to discuss an exciting project. John, we're not far off procuring a new boat uh, to replace the one that we got damaged. A few months back, one of their boats was crushed when a tug lost control of a tanker, and it's a major loss to the dive unit. Providing the only police access to water across the northwest, their role is crucial. What we're involved in is, is predominantly search and recovery of things and people. We cover the six forces from the bottom of Scotland to the bottom of North Wales. The boat will be used for a whole raft of security. It basically projects the police capabilities to a place where you might not expect the police to be. So they need to replace this boat pronto. The thing we're moving to is a used boat, which I know is a little bit unusual for us. But the reason being is, is I can get more bang for my buck. But because it's not to spec and it's not something I'm buying off the shelf, it's going to have to be something I, uh, I need some modification on. So this is where my problem is going to be. I need to turn that, what effectively looks like a tugboat, <laughs> into that, that looks like a police vessel with a big footprint. Now some of those modifications I need doing by a specialist uh, boat building company, but all the other stuff that I'll be coming to you for. The vehicle maintenance unit will do all the same modifications above water that they would do on a regular police vehicle, just on a much, much bigger scale. You know the other one was a big fella at 10 to 12 tonne? Yes. Well, this is 33 to 34 tonne. I need basically it to look like a police car on the water. At the moment, it looks like a fishing boat. Yeah, I could okay. give you the odd police car that's been in the water, if you like. <laughs> we probably got it out. This is a once-in-a-blue-moon project for the garage. I want to help you turn that into that. That's a top move, isn't it? Look forward to it. Cheers, mate. John. Thanks, mate. One, two, five miles an hour. But with 12,000 traffic offences a year... Right, off, off, off. ..their bread and butter is keeping Cheshire's road safe. We will deny the criminals the use of the roads. And one key weapon in their fight is the automatic number plate recognition vehicle. <laughs> NPR activation. Cross-referencing databases, it flags up any criminals from drug dealers to the uninsured. In a nanosecond. It's a blue Peugeot van showing no tax. 
we make sure that all of our AMPR equipped vehicles are ready and waiting to go on the road. Any that we've got in here queued up for service or repairs, then we will prioritise the jobs to make sure that they're ready for the operation. Following important intel, one of these high-spec vehicles needs to be out urgently. The safety testing of the equipment's happening right now. This particular van is mainly stationary, so John's not dealing with smashes and crashes, but testing the electrics is vital. The systems operated in this vehicle can be capable of giving a fatal shock. It's really key that we can make sure that the vehicle's safe to operate. What we've got is a telescopic mast that's actually mounted in the rear of the vehicle, and you can see the camera that's built on top of that. We've got a joystick to control the mast and the cameras, and of course, the recording facility. Safety checks complete, it's ready for operation. Flanked by a team of bikes fresh out of the garage, ready for action. The benefits of the bikes are they're very quick off the mark, they can catch up with vehicles, they can make their way through the traffic to intercept the vehicles. While driver Chris Railton sets up the telescopic mast, the bikes are on standby. And it's not long before there's a hit. Oh, it's a Tango 921. Winsford High Street AMPR activation. So I've had a vehicle go past us. It's come back saying there's no tax and no keeper registered to the vehicle. One of the motorcycle interceptors got the vehicle stopped now. Um, and it'll conduct further inquiries. This vehicle here in front of us, it's just been seized. It's got no insurance and also no, no MOT. He was on the morning school run with his children, so he was allowed to go on his way, drop his kids off at school uh, on foot, so they weren't late. No time to lose, though. The ANPR van has received a more serious call. First, it's been giving out probs and we've ceased to drink driver. Um, it's a white course, it's like the worst skinny ice table, mate. Yeah, no worries, I'll load it locally, so it ping if it goes past. Intel loaded on the system, the bikes soon find their target. You've been arrested on suspicion of drink driving, OK? Because you provided a positive sample of breath. I have done nothing wrong. We've had a report that you drink driving. I've well over limit. So we'll right. just get into custody, go through the process now. We're already quite distraught, as you can tell. She's been subjected to a roadside breath test has provided a high reading, so she's suddenly been arrested on suspicion of drink driving at this moment in time. She's to be conveyed back to the police station and we'll go from there. Nearly one in six of all deaths on the road involve drivers who are over the legal alcohol limit. I understand you're upset. I understand you don't know what's going on, but you've blown 124. 35 milligrams of alcohol per 100 millilitres of breath is the limit for England and Wales. If that reading's correct when we get to custody, you're a danger to other drivers and pedestrians. And this driver's well over. Just careful with your set when you come out. Yeah, I know I have a drink when I go to bed. You keep saying that, but you must have a lot to drink before you go to bed if you're blowing 124 at 11 something in the morning. She'll have to stay in the police station until she's sober. It's a difficult one because yeah. obviously people suffer with um, alcohol misuse and it is an illness and we sympathise with that and try and help people but then they put themselves behind the wheel and potentially, you know, you've got something there that can kill somebody. And the fact of the matter is she must stop driving through a semi-pedestrialised area. Consequences are worth thinking about. A successful hit for John's ANPR van resulted in this drunk driver receiving a two-year driving ban, a fine of £170 and 40 hours of community service. The garage is used to getting ANPR vehicles out the door, but turning a second-hand boat into a police vessel is a different story. Morning, Ross. John sends first mate and deputy Dave to assess the scale of the project. Right, I'm uh, heading off to go and see Corky's boat. Mobile on if you need me. Thank you. The team will take over the boat once the specialist engineering company Carmet Marine have made her seaworthy. So this is a police boat here? Yeah, this is her. 
It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be from the pictures we saw. Yes, they always look large when they're out the water. <laughs> what were you expecting, Dave? A dinghy? It's a dirty great boat, yeah. It's um, <laughs> a 33-tonne boat is quite a piece of equipment. He might be an expert on dry land, but on the water, Dave's relying on marine engineer Barry Roberts to show him the ropes. It's a twin-hull catamaran vessel, aluminium construction. The propellers are in good condition. The rudders are all in good condition. Overall, the structure of the vessel is excellent. Yeah, what we wanted to hear. No good looking at it from the shore, though, Dave. You need to take a closer look. There's just a small problem. I'm six foot four, but don't like heights. I think I'm high enough off the ground. I don't need any further, so, yeah. I get airsick thinking about going on it, yeah. <laughs> That's it, Dave. You can do it. <sighs> Sorry. Barry and his team have already begun the first round of modifications. The idea is to leave these handrails here. The crane is going to stay. Yeah. We'll unbolt the winch, disconnect the hydraulics, lift it off. Motorbike enthusiast Dave may not be an old sea dog, but there's one thing he does understand. Is it possible to see one? Yeah, I'll get this hatch opened up for you. Engines. Wow, it's enormous. Certainly bigger than what I'm used to seeing on four wheels. Is that engine in, in good order, do you think, Barry? It's been recently reconditioned right. and uh, there's no obvious signs of any leakage on there either. Certainly looks very clean. Clean? It's a Volvo engine. Capable of pushing this 34-ton catamaran at 18 knots. Shall we have a look inside then? Yeah, good idea. Inside where the most important reconstruction will take place. The biggest change is to the toilet. Yeah. The current arrangement is it goes straight over the side. OK. So we thought that might be a bit embarrassing for the police. Uh, just slightly. So we're fitting a small black water tank, so when you're 12 miles off the land, yeah. you can discharge that legally. OK, and that's pumped out electrically? You're not yeah. in there with a bucket? Oh, no, 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 you don't have to use a bucket. <laughs> OK. <laughs> just as well, this will be a police boat after all. We're up against the clock, really, with this one. Uh, obviously, it's an essential tool for the underwater search unit and uh, without a boat at the moment, so we've got to get it on the water. Excited about it. It's a part of the job that, wow, I'm dealing with cars, motorcycles, boats, and uh, just the helicopter to go now, really. Dream on, Dave, dream on. Mindless attack. That's how police bosses have described an attack on one of their vehicles in crew. Here we go, another one bites the dust. On his way to work, John's heard a news report which suggests it'll be a busy morning in the garage. Hi, Daz. Hello. You know where this vehicle is, do you? Good. In that case, let's go and have a nosy, eh? Three tyres were slashed on a car while an officer was carrying out inquiries into an ongoing investigation in Port and Avenue. Well, did you hear about this uh, job then, Daz? Uh, I saw it on the, the internet last night. Was, was there nothing on the telly? It just dropped off. <laughs> right. It's not often the team hear about a job before it comes in. Hey, up there we go then. Can you see any marks in them, Daz? Hey, up there it is. Hello. Well, uh, looks like a knife or something, doesn't it? Could be a screwdriver. Could actually, couldn't it? Right, buddy. Well, I'll tell you what. If I open the doors, you want to run it in? Yeah. So goes the story. Nice new car. They've punctured three tyres. It may well be that they've damaged the fourth one, too. And, uh, look, they don't steer very well. Dealing with vandalised police vehicles isn't unusual for the garage. Some damaged at the side of the road. Others are attacked during pursuits. <laughs> We commonly see vehicles coming in that a uh, doorman has broken off or kicks into the doors. Smash windscreens, uh, sometimes damage where people have tried to push the doors from the inside outwards in the back of cars. It is mindless violence. It's a cost to the public of Cheshire, to be quite honest with you. The slash tyre isn't the only police vehicle someone's left their mark on. The side of the vehicle's got quite a lot of blood on it. Yak. And they've obviously got a broken rear window. And second-in-command Dave has to do some detective work. Obviously, I need to know whether this is a police officer's blood or 
someone's blood that they were getting into the back of the car. I don't know. So I'll just go and ask the question. You'll be looking for Pete then, Dave. He booked the car in. This is where you find out how big it is when you're trying to find someone. He can't have gone far. Oh, look, there he is, looking for me. Hey! Hiya, Pete. Hey, Dave. You all right? Yeah. Um, you couldn't tell us about the... I've just noticed one with the broke rear screen. Yes. Can you tell me about it? What's, what's happened with uh, it? Well, yeah, I spoke with the sergeant from crew this morning and apparently uh, some person's head-butted it. If it's needed for evidence, we need to cover the car, and yeah. if not, we need to clean it before anyone goes near yeah, it to I'll, work. I'll speak with them at crew first yeah. to see if... Yeah. ..and uh, I'll take it from there, then. OK. The garage deal with at least two damaged windscreens a week. Easy. Blood, that's a problem. If anyone touches that blood, really, you know, they've got to go to hospital to be checked out, potentially having to have uh, hepatitis jabs to protect themselves should there be anything in it. Bodily fluids aren't the only nasties. Weapons, glass or harmful substances. The team have to watch out for all of them. You found out a bit more? Yeah, it's, it's not wanted as evidence. Somebody's put the head through it. That blood on the side, that's the only blood. Obviously needs cleaning up. At the other end of the garage, mechanic Daz is conducting a less serious investigation. What's with this stupid tash you're growing, Daz? Into recovery driver Darren's new facial hair. It's not a stupid tash. Well, why? why? Because it's cool. I think I look like, um, like a Russian czar or something on it. <laughs> A handlebar moustache. You've got all the wax in that for it. No, I haven't, no. 25 quid it cost me for a little tin of wax. Well, that big. <laughs> for my missus's benefit, it was 4 95 <laughs> Sorry, Your Excellency. Cover's blown. The trouble is, though, he's had more hair on his face than he has on his head. I don't think that's a good look, personally. Well, I think it's all right now. Is that curled? <laughs> I'm quite pleased with it. We should all wear tweed and waistcoats. And... Do you know what's sad? I quite often do. <laughs> Steady on, Darren. This is Cheshire, not East London. John's on his way to check out a more stylish makeover. Good morning, fellas. How are you? How are you? He's meeting with best mate Corky and the team of engineering brains who've masterminded the boat's transformation. That's impressive, isn't it? That's a big isn't it? It does look good from this angle, doesn't it? Barry's had it already in. He's already rubbed yeah, it down. Yeah, yeah. And this is the primer for the paint that's going to go on. Now the structural repairs are well underway, John needs to see the lie of the land. So, John, welcome aboard the cormorant. Ah, cormorant, from the Greek for bald raven. Remind you of anyone we know, John? It's a big seabird that dives. <laughs> Let's hope this bird, I mean boat's, not doing too much diving. A bit of thought's gone into this, you know. <laughs> John and the team will have to convert this finished shell of a boat into a fully functioning police craft, starting with the lighting. You see we've got big halogen work lamps. Yeah. Big halogen work lamps need to turn into... LED work lamps. Third generation LEDs are really, really powerful now. They won't have the current draw that they've well, got. Anything that doesn't use me batteries is a benefit. Now onto what really makes this a police boat. Somewhere on there now, an navy blue light. To be visible 360 degrees in the water, this light bar will be enormous. What's critical for us is actually looking at that depth there to replicate the optimum height for the light bar. If we mounted that there, that'd be absolutely perfect. You'd see that from everywhere. OK, yeah. Now the problem, building a mount capable of taking the weight. Just have a look. We'd want the plate to come out about 50 mil. If we look at the light bar, we would look at this distance from here to there. That, that's a really, really nice, strong way of putting it down. You know, for when they're hitting perfect storm and, uh, and cocky gripping the rails, <laughs> we need to make sure that uh, our bit stays on. I'd like to do a pencil drawing on this somewhere. I need a, a desk and a pencil and paper. When it comes to design, John's a technical whiz but he still hasn't quite embraced modern technology. I'm drawing it out size-wise and working out the loadings and the strength it needs to be. The light bar's uh, 27 and a half kilos, which is quite a weight when you consider that this vessel can be going up and down and hit waves, etc. Planning of the mount done, 
but John's still got a long list to crack on with. There's quite a bit to do, really. The light bulb, the speakers. We've bought some Whaler kit. Uh, now there's two amplifiers and two speakers. You press a button for the uh, Whaler to work. It sends a signal into this box. It comes out to this very heavy duty speaker. We very much need to uh, get on with it. While John's feeling the pressure, Dave's in the same boat. Livery for QE2, what on earth? He's been tasked with sorting out the livery. Hi, Dave. Following our visit to see Captain Corky's cruiser yesterday, here are the livery requirements. Not only will its size be off the scale, the deadline's looming. Got someone raising an order now. I've checked them. They look absolutely fine. So this is if you want to go ahead and get them made. That would be much appreciated, if possible, for Thursday. I know it's a, a big shout, that, but... Excellent. Thank you very much, Will. I owe you a pie or something, all right? But it'll be down to Darren to make sure they're on correctly. Going with Dave and John down to the boat to put some stickers on the side of it. And it's a huge responsibility. There's a lot of stickers, isn't there? There's about six, and they're all big. Dumb question, but they won't be in the water, will they? Because well, they're going to get splashed. Aren't they're going to get splashed, they? aren't they? Yeah. So that'll be waterproof. I hope they know where the water line is, because if I stick one, then they put it in the water. <laughs> <laughs> the dolphins will be able to read it. <laughs> Good point. I wonder if Roz fancies joining the engineering department. Daz, why don't you subtly find out? Do you like working down here, Roz, with us? It's all right. It's dirty, though. It needs cleaning. Karen cleans it, doesn't she? No, she doesn't clean down the earth. Pass us them sweets. This is one of the perks of being down here. Constant supply of sweets. <laughs> Coming up... Too cold, really. Things come unstuck for Darren. Whoa. And there's a mystery for John to unravel. It's a bloody corpse bag, isn't it? What's he done with the body? I want to know. It's early morning at the vehicle maintenance unit. And something is out of the ordinary. John's beloved car, a Beamer, affectionately known as the bus, went out on loan to one of his favourite coppers. Oh, God. Jumping heck. But not all of it came back. So I got a call, I don't know, about 10 o'clock Saturday morning. It's not going to be fetching luck that day, is it? No, absolutely not. Well, it's a right bloody mess, isn't it? Damaged windows may be the norm, but this one's been replaced by something a little unusual. It's not everyone who travels around with a spare body bag, is it? Unless you're a... <laughs> is that what it is? Like a murderer or something, <laughs> like, yeah. Is it a body bag? Yeah, it's a, it's a bloody cop bag, isn't it? Why was he travelling around with one of them? Was he expecting to kill somebody? <laughs> Um, yes. Any um, body damage anywhere, Dave? Is there anything I that off. means it's going to be oh, a I thought that was. I thought, there was a, I thought they backed into something, but it's actually just the tape line. Probably ice falling off a motorway bridge and gone th straight through the back window. Either that, or I thought if it's had a leaky seal and it's got some water in around the seal and he's put the heated screen on and it's boiled it. I think it's just shattered through the heat differential between heated air, windscreen and being... Like, it's not been hit by a big icicle, that, has it? I mean, something dry, something it? wet would have stayed in here. Well, me poor old bus. The bus is the boy's favourite runaround at the garage. He does love the bus, and so do I. I mean, we argue frequently about whose it is. Dave, I'll let you drive it, and then you think it's yours. But when it's broken, it's yours. So it's yeah, yours well, thank you very much indeed. As soon as a new screen goes in, we'll, uh, uh, it's back to me. But the real question is, who was responsible? Probably never get to the bottom of it, really, will we? But just an interesting repair method. And not everybody has a body bag in the boot that they can um, stick across and, uh, and put on with gaffer tape. What's he done with the body, I want to know. Yeah, absolutely. While this gory mystery remains unsolved, a man in a white suit has come to clean up Pete's bloody Peugeot. I'm told uh, there's no blood inside the vehicle. It's just what we can see here. We did crime scenes, so I followed the uh, forensics inside. If it was HIV, I would be informed. 
I've got a job that's just come through, and that is a major cell clean. Usually that means human waste on the walls, on the ceilings. But not quite as glamorous as it sounds. Decontamination complete. You can take that suit off now, mate. You're only in the car park. Time to make this Peugeot roadworthy. But damage like this isn't unusual for a regular beat car. This is a Widness Hyundai. I've got no here. Renew both front door mirrors through vandalism. Sometimes they'll run over and there'll be footprints all over the top and they'll kick the window in as they're passing over the roof. Pretty much anything that they can quickly do and uh, get out the way before anybody catches them. There go. Let's go get the new mirrors. New mirrors may cost a bob or two, but at least Daz can save them a few pennies. Just uh, prise the old cover off. Like that. It doesn't matter about the surface scratches because the chances are you're going to get kicked off again. The garage is used to fixing up and decorating traditional police vehicles. There we go, sorted. But getting a great big catamaran to look like it fits in with the rest of the fleet is a totally different kettle of fish. The hull will be painted blue and the police signs will be in yellow and it'll also be in retro reflective material. So in dark light conditions, the slightest bit of light on it and uh, the police sign will glow up. On the water, this boat's size will shrink so the signage will have to stand out. What the size of that rascal? They're big guys when we actually roll them out, aren't they? Let's hope you got the spelling right. P-O-L. So by process of elimination, hopefully this says ice. I think we'll wheel down in and go give me a shout. <laughs> wow. Guess what? Mm. <laughs> oh, show a little enthusiasm, Daz. They're big, aren't they? They are big. Oh, it's in two bits, is it? Yeah, look. The pole and the ice. So they're going to go in there. Um, it, it is measured up. Right. There's three and a half metres there. The two big ones down the, the main sides. With the largest sign over three metres long on a 14 and a half metre catamaran, Darren's got his work cut out. And if you don't get it done, you'll be doing it the week after, but you'll be in a dinghy alongside it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right, OK. Going like that. <laughs> as long as somebody gets me some seasick pills, I'll be all right. <laughs> I don't do boats. I'll see you later. Thanks, Daz. All right, see you later. You. <clears throat> It'll be a nice little day out, something different to do. I might even get some lunch out of it if he's feeling generous. <laughs> It might be full steam ahead with the livery, but with only hours to go before a big Friday night in Chester... Someone has clearly been drinking on an empty head. I just tried a pizza, he's chipped me out. John's got another important van to service. The big stuff to actually get out at the weekend of vehicles like this fella here. A customised riot van that means business. Big blue vans were, were put on the road to be big, heavy, hardcore. We've arrived. <laughs> They're the ones that are like, oh, it's <laughs> big blue van, you know. <laughs> <They're> gonna... <laughs> We've got some officers that mean business inside. This looks like a riot van, but it's a riot van with a difference, and not just because it's blue. It's still got all of the protective elements of the polycarbonate uh, screens, etc., and puncture-proof sides, but it's markedly different. Well, the white vans they have in a cell in the back. The blue ones don't have a cell. They still have what we call the fridge-proof roof. Very, very, very strong roof, uh, all reinforced. Yep, that's right. It could withstand a fridge being dropped on it. We've got CCTV. We can relay what we're seeing back to the control room. And even with the van's formidable presence, the public has reacted to them in quite an unexpected way. We've put the hashtag Big Blue Van on the side, and rather than uh, making people maybe leave an area, they're actually attracting people to that area to talk to the officers and have the photo taken with the van and the officers. It's got a following, would you believe, where people do selfies with them. Hashtag Big Blue Van. The force is, is heavy into Twitter, and um, we like to have uh, our Big Blue Van. In fact, here's, uh, here's one of the inferior white ones. <laughs> <laughs> 
just try. Hashtag big white van doesn't really have the same ring, I'm afraid. Despite competing with Justin Bieber for followers, this van's got a job to do, so getting it ready remains a priority. Finish it off? Yeah, just to make sure we've put enough oil in it. It's going to go out yeah. tonight? Yeah. It's got oh, that's, a, good, that's good news. Rope test it, uh, rate test it, and it should be ready. That's it. From one big blue van to a very big blue boat. Let's do it. It's time to hit the deck and finally make this boat part of the fleet. Right, Daz, in we go, mate. Coke is crafty, he's dead ahead. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's bigger than his old one, isn't it? Yeah. It was battleship grey the last time we saw it. It was in primer. First job is to get the livery on. If I grab a pole, you grab an ice. Easier said than done. Now, this livery has got really, really uh, high tack adhesive on it. You stick it on once. You can't take it off and put it back on again. This isn't sticking very well. John, you were saying? It is a little bit cold in here. What we'll have to do is just to uh, warm up the adhesive a bit on the tape. We don't want it falling off, do we? Moment of truth. Whoa. OK, another moment of truth. That's the temperature, Daz. Yeah, it's too cold, really. Can you chuck the rag up, John, please? Yeah, yeah, no problem. We're not sticking very well at the minute. But as it warms up, it'll just soften that glue off a bit and it'll stick much better. That's all right, that is. Oh, all that hard work that these guys have done in here, and you're going to walk away the superstar cos you're going to make it in a police boat. <laughs> Phew. One down. Now, it's getting those three-metre signs in the right place. Right, 50 mil down from the top. That's your centre level, which you can't see down there. No, I can't. Are you doing that in parallel to the top rail? No, this is level, this is spirit level level. John leaves Darren to make sure it's at least above water level before checking on his other designs. See the speakers? Yeah. That's the first time I've seen that up close. Made some good bracketry there. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased that looks good. Mm, yeah. John's design for the light bar mount has worked out too. They've just made a really good job of it. The thickness and the strength that's built into it is really impressive. Couldn't ask for any more. But there's one more boy's toy he's keen to play with. Absolutely beautiful. That's a work of art, that, mate, isn't it, eh? That's the Mona Lisa. You won't see this in the Louvre. It's the boat's main controller operating the lights and sound system. And we've got all wiring diagrams and pinouts for all the connections as well. Fantastic, mate. Absolutely, really impressive. Manning this masterpiece will be PC Heffin Morgan from the dive unit. You can see the switch he's prepared there, forward speakers, siren tones, and then the 360s. <laughs> And it looks like a very complicated piece of equipment to me. That's, uh, mine's far superior to mine are at work here. I wouldn't say that, Hef. There ain't no mistake of what it is now, is there? Beautiful, really happy with that. John might be happy, but the man whose opinion really counts is Corky. In your office the other day, John, that was the world's biggest police sign. <laughs> and it's now not the world's biggest police sign. So it was exactly spot on. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And Daz, deliverer of dreams again, mate. Well done, <laughs> well done. What I will say, though, mate, if I could have called it the Hoosie, I would have. Coming up... Don't! Oi, 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 oi. The cuddly big blue van has to get tough. You spat in the dorm in space, so I'm arresting you on suspicion of assault. And it's launch day, but it's not all plain sailing. I do not want to miss the launch of this boat. Responsible for Cheshire Police's fleet, the Vehicle Maintenance Unit are a crack team of specialists. We want the bike back immediately. Hey, up, Matt, stop showing off. And getting squad cars ship shape is their game. By hook or by crook, we will fix them. We've got one that's been fixed, should have been picked up by a bobby to go back to the station, but it has been left on the car park, the battery's gone flat. So we'll go and jump start it. And Dad, do you know how to work one of these? Yes, I do. Which is why I'm coming with you. <laughs> he said it was right over there, didn't he? I don't know, what is it? It's an Hyundai, that is. Where are you going? Well, I'll have a look without this. Well, it's going to be that one, isn't it? Well, go and have a look. Well, 
Well, that's an Hyundai. And that's an Hyundai. Tracking the right Hyundai could be an issue. Well, what reg is it? CWJ. It's not that one. It's this one. Now that Laurel and Hardy have found the car, it's time to get it started. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Which one's the red one go on, Daz? The positive. Negative. No, the positive. Negative. What's that joke about? How many mechanics it takes to change a spark plug? Red one on the negative. Yeah, that's it. Another vehicle ready for action... That's it. ..is the VMU's social media star. And unlike the Hyundai, it's raring to go. Just as well, it's Friday night in Chester. You get me the space on that? It's because by your own admission, yeah. you're quite drunk now. On patrol tonight are officers Neil Clegg and Mike Clark. And they've already received their first call out. Hello, fella. Hi. Are you okay? Yeah, he's drank too much on your time, we That's not a problem, mate. Do you know where you're going? Yeah. I can't walk yet. Okie dokie. Too much and it hit me all at once. Just don't stay out too long, mate, because it's a bit cold. Yeah. You all right, Chief? Yeah. Cool. Studies suggest an incredible 53% of police time is taken up by alcohol-related incidents. If CCTV can just keep an eye on him. And so the big blue van could get busy. He's had quite a bit to drink, so as soon as he's sobered himself up for a couple of minutes, uh, he'll be on his way. Quite happy with him. They're the kind of people we want. Two bad boys. It's chucking out time. He's an aggressive female. You spat in the doorman's face, so I'm arresting you on suspicion of assault on the doorstep. If you swear, sorry, mate, I'm sorry. if you swear again, all right, all right, you will wake sorry, up in yeah. the cells with an £80 fine. Yeah. Is that what you want? But I can't please everyone. Is that what you want? Not really. You can please me by being very, very quiet. Right, but I can't please Otherwise, everyone. I'll sit you on the naughty step. Right, so, Do you understand? Yeah, I'll, I'll right, be, yeah. shut up. Don't touch me like that, right? Don't wait, touch wait, me. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't. He's not doing anything and he's not. Just behave yourself. Just move away. Go away now. You're going to find yourself arrested. Tonight, one of the cells in a white riot van has come in handy. But it's still John's hashtag big blue van that's grabbing all the limelight. Do you want to get in the photo? Yeah. How did you find the long wheel? I've got one myself. Yeah, no, I like them. Smart. Not only has the big blue van helped arrest several drunks and prevented a few drink fueled fights, it's also narrowly avoided getting a ding. I'm just conscious of the fact I've got another great big bollard right behind me. And the last thing I want to do is put a big dent in the big blue van. Good John Hussey will have a coronary. Give him something to fix, though. Yeah, give him something else to fix. There's not much. And most importantly, it's also maintained Twitter relations. So, hashtag Big Blue Van. Do you have a look what they've uh, been up to, what yes. the latest tweets yes. are on it? Yes. OK. Big Blue Van seems to be keeping everyone safe on uh, Chester. Time for the, an old smoky then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's nice to be popular for the right reason, for a change, isn't it? Yeah, it's running running at it and throwing bricks. Yeah, yeah. After three months of planning, welding and wiring, the big day has finally arrived. Corky's new police boat, the Cormorant, is ready to make its maiden voyage. It's not the kind of police boat you'd normally see. And PC Heffin Morgan from the dive unit will be the skipper. This is certainly the largest thing that I'll have ever driven in and out of Liverpool Marina, so that'll be when my heart starts beating a little bit quicker. But there's one member of the build team who could miss the boat. So I've been stuck in a meeting, which supposed to have finished early. Instead, it's finished late. So God only knows how I'm going to get to the damn boatyard in time now. Well, I'm disappointed that he's not here. I'd like to see John's face when she gets wet. Because John's only ever seen her sitting in the shed. But John will be here, I've no doubt. A really, really big day. There's no way I want to miss it. I'm doing my best to get there in time. And it would be just nice here to put my arm around and say, there you go, John, we're nearly there. But time and tide waits for no man, not even John. This is it, yeah, that's half and the guy's getting on. 
She'll be suspended in a cradle while the all-important safety checks are carried out before casting off. Check enough fluid, the water, make sure of all the, all the levels are ready as you would before if you've rebuilt an engine. The electrics will be getting checked. Unless they're running late, I think it's sailed. Check's done. Time to see what the cormorant's made of. Well, give, him a, give him a spin, then. This 34-ton police boat is the flagship for the underwater search and marine team. With two inbuilt engines, she'll navigate the waters of the Irish Sea, reaching speeds of 18 knots. A mast able to carry a massive 70 kilograms of weight. A lighting system that can be seen from 360 degrees. Loud hailer and PA system. A switch panel to control all emergency equipment. And there's no chance of missing that three-metre police signage. Seafaring criminals, think again. She's ready to take the wind out of your sails. Are you at the wheel? I'm at the wheel. <laughs> Just seeing you coming on, bow on there, mate. <laughs> yeah. Hey, excellent, excellent. Everything's fine. You've got good uh, engine pressure. We've got good temperature. Yeah, everything looks really good. We'll do a bit of a sail past and we'll try and get a, a bit of a wriggle on as well, so she looks good. See you later on. Thanks, mate. Cheers, boss. No worries. Catch you later. Fine. Everything's working. And speaking of working... Hey, up, fella. Despite just missing the launch, there's still time for Corky to show her off. Especially for you. Right. She's going to sail past. God, it looks fabulous, doesn't it? That's quite fast as well, isn't it? Blue lights for us, mate, so John can see his treatment. <laughs> What's looking at, John? Are you happy? You can't miss that. She looks lovely, mate. She really does. Thank you, F. Thank everyone. Cheers, mate. Wow, that's the best thing since sliced bread, then, isn't it? Eh? But here, it's John. Wonderful. Corky and John may be feeling the love, but there's one outstanding matter. Remember John's favourite runaround? Well, my poor old boss. The one taped up with a body bag. Well, it's a right bloody mess, isn't it? Corky's got a confession. Mind my own business in the snow. And I heard this BANG! I went and looked in the rear mirror and I noticed that my back windscreen now was just frosted glass. <laughs> What the hell? So I pulls into the cab. As I pulled into the cab and got out and shut the door, the back window just went. The cause remains a mystery, but at least the who done it has been solved. Now I felt awful because it was the bus. Oh, well. and I know it was your pride and joy. It's all right. Anyone else? You know what? They'd have been in for some. I know. Sting. I know. I mean... But he's still got one last request. The question is, mate, is have you had it fixed yet? Yes. Of course. Guys, can I borrow it tomorrow? No. <laughs> <laughs>